Hello watch enthusiasts! Each year it seems as though the price of watches goes up, and so it's become more and more difficult to find watches at very affordable prices, and certainly the values held by brands at these lower prices have changed rather. And so today I'd like to speak about watches under £200, because I feel that whether one wants to spend £200 or £20,000, there's a space in the market for every type of watch, and they certainly all deserve their representation. And so for those who, who would like a, a more modest watch, but still with the same quality and indeed interesting features, I feel this is a very interesting price range. And so I'll begin with a watch which has caught on to the trend of vintage inspired dive watches with a Seiko 5. Now because the first watch I'd like to speak about is a Seiko 5, I thought I should show this Seiko 5, which isn't the first watch in this video incidentally, but rather I'd just like to point out that these Seiko 5s without turning bezel and with that very sa simple um, Seiko case with the crown at 4 o'clock, are quite possibly the best value watches if you want to extend below the £100 mark and save a bit of money. Because these watches feature an automatic movement, albeit without hacking, so you, if you pull the crown out, the, the hands don't stop, but you can still use it as a, a very accurate timekeeper with automatic winding, and you also have a glass case back so you can see the movement operating. It has the day-date complication and a variety of, um, of shock-resistant um, designs to make the watch more robust. And so this was very much just a, a short note, but if you are looking for a watch below the price range of this video, then do take a look at these Seikos for about 60 to 80 pounds, which offer an enormous amount. The variant of the Seiko 5 though that I would like to speak about is this version. Because this version, which comes under several serial numbers, um, all with SNZH, and then uh, this is the SNZH 55, the 53 and the 57, which are the versions I'd like to speak about in this video. But these are watches which capture the current uh, desire for vintage-inspired dive watches with a real charm, and this is a watch which is built extremely well for the price, which is usually under £135, which I think is excellent for the package one's getting, bearing in mind this is about £100 less than Seiko's um, bottom-end professional dive watch, being the SKX line. Now despite the fact that this watch has a unidirectional rotating bezel, it isn't a dive watch because it only has 100 meter water resistance and the crown doesn't screw down. However, what I've found from owning one of these myself is that the water resistance is wholly adequate for, uh, for anything like snorkeling, for example, albeit I wouldn't recommend it for scuba diving, for instance. But I think for this price, and bearing in mind that I have a more, a more professional dive watch later on in this video, I think this offers a great deal for its price of £135, in terms of being a really interesting looking watch, and a very, very well made one at that. The case of the watch is 42mm in stainless steel, which is brushed and polished extremely well, and gives a very old fashioned style, but is very much up to modern standards, with a 14mm thickness. In addition, on the top of this watch it has a domed hardlex crystal, which is Seiko's proprietary mineral crystal technology. And whilst this isn't as, as scratch resistant as, as a sapphire crystal, it does mean that if you knock it, unlike a sapphire it's less likely to shatter, and so as a result will, it will protect the watch better if you bash it around. The dial of the watch comes in three variants, and this defines what the three different reference numbers mean. Because the dials of the watches um, are, are very simple in many ways, having Seiko, 5 and Sports, in addition to describing the movement in terms of being automatic with 23 joules and having 100 meter water resistance. It's also very well adorned with these, um, these cut and polished indices around the dial which are extremely sharply done as per Seiko's standard, and one has a box around the, the day-date window so that that's framed nicely and doesn't appear in any way shabby despite the, 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 the relatively affordable price for this watch. And this uh, does also match the hands which are this sword style which are very much key to the dive watch aesthetic this watch has. Now the dial does come in the three variants, the first being the simple black version with, with uh, silver accents, then of course one has the blue version with a sunburst blue base, which, which gives a very very bright and summery look, in addition to the black which also um, uh, has a, a change of indices. Because where the, the, uh, the normal black version has silver indices, a silver Seiko logo, um, silver hands in addition to, uh, to, to all the, the details on the dial being in silver or white, this version has them in gold which gives the aesthetic of the old gilt-style dive watches of the 1960s. In addition to having a, a glossy and somewhat luxurious finish to the dial, in addition to the applied uh, Seiko logo in 5, with a metal um, piece which is applied to the surface of the dial, the, the luminescence of the dial which is, is applied in small markers around the edge of those, um, the, those indices, those polished metal indices, and indeed in very large quantities in the hands, um, this, uh, this uh, type of Lumabrite compound used by Seiko is very bright and very long-lasting, and actually is, is able to outperform quite a few watches well above this price range, so that really is a, a very uh, helpful and beneficial attribute to this watch. 
Running around the edge of the, edge of the dial, we see a, a rotating bezel, and it's unidirectional, like um, uh, like uh, like most dive watches are, in order to to avoid you from knocking the bezel and um, and and affecting the time. But one has an acrylic insert, which gives a an interesting translucence to the surface of the the bezel and allows it to look all the more interesting. And takes from vintage dive watches, which also had these uh, the, this same style of bezel which, whilst not luminescent, which will be a problem for some, it is very aesthetically pleasing in my eyes. And the bezel clicks 60 times to rotate around the, uh, the dial of the watch, and from my experience is very well made, and, um, and whilst there's a bit of play in it, it, um, it it's very much a, a firm-fitting bezel that won't move once you've set it. Inside the watch one has a, a typical movement, which is the, um, the, the very well-known 7S26 movement from Seiko, which has the day-date complication, 23 joules, and is automatic. Unlike more expensive Seikos, it doesn't have hacking or hand winding, so you can't wind the watch up if it hasn't been worn for a few days. You simply have to put it on the wrist and wear it for a while to wind it up. And likewise, one can't stop the seconds. But I think for £135, this offers a great deal of watch, a very high quality with a decent bracelet and, um, and a very appealing build in my eyes, which makes for a, a, an attractive watch and an attractive option as an alternative to a standard dive watch for this price range. Whilst the Seiko looked for inspiration amongst the pages of history, this Citizen seems far more forward-looking, with a design which looks uh, looks straight out of uh, a science fiction film, and a, a build which is particularly interesting, especially bearing in mind the technology that goes into these watches, and really what you're getting for the price. Because this watch packs a heck of a lot in terms of being a titanium watch, with very impressive specifications, and a unique movement. Beginning with the case of this watch, it has a 44mm by 10mm thick case, which means that whilst it's quite wide as a result of that very wide stance to the case, its length actually isn't very long in terms of the, the, uh, the top of the watch to the bottom of the watch, and also its thickness um, between the, the glass on the front and the case back is only 10mm, which means that it should be wearable with the vast majority of cuffs without any sort of problem, especially with those, uh, those sloped sides to the case. Now in terms of the, the material of the case, this isn't steel, but instead it's titanium, and the titanium has been brushed in this, um, this sunburst effect, this uh, sun ray effect, out from the centre. So as you can see down the sides of the case, the brushing moves away from the centre of the dial, whilst the brushing on that, that flat bezel around the edge of the dial, with its, uh, its graduations every five minutes, is circular, which gives a very complex and very interesting contrast between these two finishes, and it's not something you would expect for this price. I feel that this design works particularly well because that, uh, that dodecagon styled uh, bezel, which actually is the same piece of, as the rest of the case and actually isn't a separate part, really uh, integrates extremely well with the dial. And the dials are all sunburst dials, so they're all brushed outward from the centre so that they catch the light in particular angles and, and allow the watch to really appear both simple in terms of the silver version where the dial matches the case, but also very interesting and complex when you see it under the light. They've also put a great deal more detail than is recognised on these dials, because whilst the Citizen logo is simply printed on, in addition to EcoDrive Titanium, the rest of the dial features this ring around the edge which is brushed against the, uh, the grain of the, uh, the rest of the dial, onto which they've applied separate markers which float above the rest of the dial to create a, an element of depth which you wouldn't otherwise have. Speaking of the depth, the watch is actually water resistant to 100 metres, and, and as a result is perfectly suited to, to being used in the water, though again scuba diving is not suggested with this type of watch. The hands are quite complex and multifaceted, with, uh, with the hour hand cut out, and the minute hand also cut, but a longer hand as you can see, which in my eyes is exactly the right length for the hand, in order to extend beyond those markers around the edge of the dial, and to give you a very precise uh, ability to read the time. There's also a contrasting second hand, with its base in the same colour as the other hands, but with its length in, in a contrasting colour depending upon the variant. And of course this also matches the, um, the, the, the open uh, day-date window, where you can see the day of the week and the date, as an added helpful functionality to this watch. Sitting on top of the dial is a domed mineral crystal. And whilst I would have preferred to see a sapphire crystal in this case, because it is just that little bit more scratch resistant, the doming of the crystal was a helpful touch to give it a subtle dome over the front of the watch which matches the angle of the bezel and those, um, those markings around the edge of the dial, which means you get a, a more unified design, and one which I'm pleased they decided to include. Of course, one interesting feature of this is it does have a five-year warranty, which is very helpful to have with a watch like this, in order to be sure that you're going to get the, the customer support that you expect. And then, of course, there's the movement. Because this isn't a mechanical watch in the traditional sense, but rather is a quartz watch, so it will be significantly more accurate than a mechanical watch that doesn't have all of those gears and springs, which bring, I think, a smile to the face of the, the vast majority of, of watch lovers. 
But in this case, we have an EcoDrive movement, which is a proprietary technology to Citizen. And what this means is that it has a, a, solar, uh, a solar cell built into the dial. So uh, by, by putting this watch under the light, or indeed simply wearing it uh, out and about where light can, can get to the dial, the watch will charge up its battery, and as a result will, will run for several months before running out and having to be put, put in the sun again, um, which is making this watch an extremely convenient watch, because it means that uh, you, don't have to, you don't have to change the battery, which is, uh, which is one of those inconveniences that quartz watches so often have, which are eliminated by this, uh, this technology. And so the price for this watch starts really around the £130 mark for a version on a leather strap, with the, the price extending up towards £200 if you go for a version on a matching titanium uh, brushed bracelet. And the bracelets at this price range aren't particularly well made, but they're still a nice touch and, and will hold the watch to the wrist with, without any trouble, but they don't have quite the complexity of a more expensive bracelet. The next watch in this video is a very well known one amongst watch, watch uh, aficionados, but is less well known amongst the general public, because it, it's made by Orient. And Orient is a brand which doesn't have a, a very big presence in terms of its presence in shops, and really you have to order online. And so in many ways this is a brand which isn't particularly well known, but operates within the, the Seiko Epson Corporation, and as a result is, is very much a recognised brand, with a very interesting product. Orient style watches are generally very conservative in their styling, because this watch continues on really from the Mako, the original Ray, and, and indeed now becoming the Ray 2, is an interesting piece with a design which is very much of that classical style. One sees a 41.5mm case in stainless steel, with a very fine level of brushing on the top of the lugs and around the top of the watch, in addition to polished sides, and various elements in brushed and polished steel on the case back. And while speaking about the case back, the watch is 13mm thick, which means that it sinks rather nicely into the wrist, but, uh, but nonetheless uh, wears its size well, and doesn't appear too hefty nor, uh, nor too dainty, which is really ideal for a watch like this. In addition to that, the proportions of this watch are so classically correct that you really couldn't go wrong with it in terms of sizing. It'll fit both small and big wrists alike, and is a very comfortable wear due to the curvature of the case, and the fact that the bezel is very heavily domed, which means that you won't catch the edges of it on any sort of shirt cuff or sleeve, and nor will you have any problems with regards to the crown jutting into your wrist, because they've redesigned the crown in this most recent variant, which means that the crown no longer juts out quite as far as before, but is fully guarded by a pair of crown guards, which means that should you knock it, you won't disturb the crown. Speaking of the crown of the watch, for a £150 to £170 watch, this, uh, this watch is very well, well specced, and in terms of the crown, it has a signed crown, which is very well cut and, and very easy to manipulate thanks to large knurlings, and is a screw-down crown. And whilst this watch isn't rated as an ISO certified dive watch, it, uh, it really does, uh, does fulfil all the criteria for a watch of this price range, with a very adequate 200 meter water resistance, and a build which is very, very sturdy in its, um, it, it's, its assembly and its design, in addition to that screw down crown which is protected, and so I really would regard this watch as a perfectly adequate dive watch, if you want to use it for scuba diving for example. Likewise, the, uh, the dial of the watch very much follows this traditional style, where you can either have it in, uh, in, in black or in sunburst blue, though a number of other variants have been seen. These are the, the most easily um, accessible versions, and the versions which are, are most commonly seen. There is also the Raven version in PVD black, which also shares the black dial and black bezel. Now the sunburst blue is usually a favourite because it uh, catches the light beautifully, but if you want something more classical, the black is always an option. The indices are very, very well applied, albeit with a quite, uh, quite rounded form, and they're applied with a, a metal rim, which gives them a very luxurious feel on the surface of the dial, and match the hands, which really are unique to this watch very, very well. Around the edge of the dial we see this chapter ring, which is a raised section with the, the minute markings, which shows a greater attention to detail where they've tried to add something a bit different in, rather than simply putting that on the dial, and really does help to make the, the watch appear more three-dimensional, and give you a, a very interesting and very appealing watch altogether. The hands are, are very varied with a, an arrow style second hand, a sword style minute hand, and this bizarre composite style of hour hand, all of which hold an extremely large amount of luminova, I mean you can see them in the dark extremely well. Speaking of the luminescence of the watch, the indices on the dial as well as the hands hold a great deal of luminescence, and, uh, and thanks to the way it's, it's built, for a long time this was the most, most uh, legible watch in my collection, with a very very bright build in terms of having, um, having extraordinarily bright hands in the dark which last a very long time. And there is also loom on the, the bezel as well at 12 o'clock. The dial also features a day-date complication and a very well applied um, Orient logo at 12 o'clock. But one interesting detail is that the, the day-date complication is now available to, uh, to be um, operated via the crown. Previously they used to be a pusher at 2 o'clock, 
but with these new versions they've, they've eliminated that, which gives a much a much cleaner aesthetic, and in my eyes makes the watch a, um, a far better option as far as a piece for this price goes. And, uh, and also, in addition to this, the bezel is very, very well built, and of course is unidirectional, so that if you knock it, you can only, uh, you can, you can only increase the time you've been timing, as opposed to reduce it, as a precaution for diving. And with 120 clicks, it's very precise, and is very easily manipulated thanks to those knurlings on it. The insert is aluminium rather than ceramic or any other option, but I've found it to be very resistant to scratches, and really there are no problems with this because you can get replacements quite easily. Inside the watch is the automatic in-house caliber F6922, and whilst not the most luxurious of movements, it's an extremely well-built movement, and one which I've, uh, I've seen several times and I've found to be extremely well-designed at that. The movement does run to lower beat rate of 21,600 vibrations per hour, which effectively is 3 hertz or 6 beats a second, which, whilst a, a tad stuttery, isn't too much of a problem. And of course with these new movements you do also have the hacking and hand winding option, so if you pull out the crown the second stop so you can set it more accurately, and of course uh, when you, um, you want to, to wind up the watch, if it's gone flat, um, you can do that via the crown. And so for £150 to £170 I think this watch offers a great deal to a buyer, and is a very interesting, and I think very attractive timepiece. The penultimate watch I'd like to speak about is a piece from Rue. And these are watches which are made by quite a small brand, but which, which I've, I've worked with before in terms of showing their watches on the channel. And I was incredibly impressed by these watches for a number of reasons, I and mean, I haven't been paid to say this at all, um, I just feel they fit into this video extremely well, because they, they, uh, they, they, they compare very favourably to other options around this price range. Now of course with a name like Rue being a wheel in French, these watches are very much racing inspired, and take inspiration from those 70s watches with tonneau styles of, of cases from, from, for example, Hoyer um, of that, to that period. But I think these watches work extremely well because their finishing is superb, and they have a movement which is one of my favourites at this price range just because it's such a robust one. Now starting with the basics, these watches are 41.5mm across, though of course they have tonneau styles of cases so they have a slightly bulging side, though because of their curved shape they're actually extremely comfortable, and are only 10.9mm thick which again helps the watch to, to, to fit a little bit better. And the tolerances with this case are fantastic. The, uh, the, the, the general finish is bead blasted, but it's a very fine bead blasting with brushing down those flanks of the case, just to give a slightly different finish, and one which doesn't make the watch appear too, um, too shiny or too, too, um, too bold, but allows it to have a slightly varied finish and make it appear all the more interesting to the, to the owner. The case also comes in a black PVD finish, because there's, uh, there are several versions of the watch, one with a, um, a normal stainless steel case, a cream dial and black elements with yellow, whilst there are also black versions with a, a blacked out case, a black dial and uh, some uh, cream subdials, whilst there is also an all black one with a gunmetal dial. But uh, one thing to note is that the crown and the pushers, whilst unique to these watches, and with a very clever design which means they're very easy to use, um, these pushers um, do remain stainless steel coloured, irrespective of uh, whether you go for a PVD option, just to stand out and create a bit of contrast. Sitting atop the watch is a flat sapphire crystal, which is rare for this price range and really is excellent to see on a watch like this, which means you're able to, to have the peace of mind of an extremely scratch resistant crystal. In addition to this, the, uh, the dial is very, very complex, with a flat base layer, as you can see, with a raised, um, a raised uh, set of graduations around the edge of the dial and sunken subdials, which keep a flat form, but still remain very interesting in terms of their design, with the date placed at 3 o'clock. And you'll notice that the subdials are placed in this, this very peculiar arrangement of having them at 12 and, uh, and at 9, which is very typical of, uh, of some chronograph movements from the 70s, and so as a result it's interesting they've been able to, to replicate this with the modern movement. Now in terms of what these subdials read, um, at the 12 o'clock position you have the, um, the tenths of a second um, indeed uh, displayed very very well, in fact these are, um, these are twentieths of a second um, as this, this hand runs around that subdial once a second and gives you a very clear indication of, of the, um, the, the, the chronograph time. And then likewise one has the minutes placed at the, the nine o'clock position on that other subdial with the central second hand being, uh, being used to, to time the seconds on the chronograph. The movement inside this watch is a Miyota Quartz uh, chronograph, and whilst these aren't the most celebrated movements, I'm extremely fond of them. And the reason for this is that um, Seiko um, VK movements, for example, tend to be seen in more expensive watches uh, in general, and whilst they have the very clever um, reset, which means they look like a mechanical watch as they reset suddenly, these movements in Myers are a bit more versatile, 
because as you can see they've been able to use this movement to have those two subdials placed at the 12 and the 9 o'clock position, and the date at 3. And in addition to this, if ever the watch is knocked and the hands are misaligned by a knock, unlike a mechanical chronograph which would of course have to go back to the manufacturer, here if you pull the crown out and then you use the pushers, you can actually realign all of the hands, which is, uh, which is a really great feature, um, and something which a lot of quartz chronographs don't have. In addition to that, to make it look like a mechanical watch and have that sort of feel, the second hand doesn't tick in single second increments, but rather flows around the dial in, in smaller ticks, which is a great thing to see and does lend to a really interesting design with this watch. And as though the cherry on the top, this watch also comes with a very attractive and very supple leather strap with holes in it, um, like those rally straps from the 70s, and also does come with a silicon uh, strap if you want something that will be water resistant, um, indeed to, to protect it from sweat for example, um, but uh, this watch isn't particularly water resistant so I wouldn't recommend swimming with it. But they do also sell a variety of coloured Cordura straps on their website as well if you fancy one of those, making this watch a very interesting and very appealing option for this price. In this video I was very keen to include a Swiss made watch, because a lot of people believe uh, erroneously really that these, uh, these watches are very expensive or have to be very expensive. And so I, I, I looked to Mondaine, which are a brand which I, I quite like in terms of their design and in terms of their, their, their origins and, and the way they, they go about producing watches. Because they're very true to the Swiss railway clock design. Because these, these are designs which are, are amongst the most legible of clocks in the world, and they're used universally across Swiss railway um, stations and indeed uh, across their whole railway network. Because this is a design with the white dial and the, the black hands with the red second hand that is universally legible and gives a fantastically clear demonstration of the time, which is, uh, is both well designed but also very clever in terms of, uh, of using the Swiss flag to produce something which is, uh, is both patriotic and, and typically Swiss, but also very clear. And so the version of this watch I'd like to share with you today is the Giant. Now the Mondaine Giant is an interesting piece because it takes that, uh, that inspiration, but in this case with the new backlight versions makes them all the more helpful and legible. Because this watch comes in two versions, the Giant and the Mini Giant, with the Giant being 42mm by 10.3mm and the 35mm Mini Giant having a thickness of only 9.5mm. Now in terms of sizing both are very very wearable, um, though of course they will wear smaller in terms of uh, their, their, their feel on the wrist than they look because um, they have a lugless design. So in many ways they'll, uh, they're, they're a nice balance between comfort and size. And the 35mm is more of a unisex design whilst the 42mm is very much the men's. Now they come in a polished stainless steel case with no lugs, which means that the, the strap or the bracelet meets the watch, um, or meets the case rather, underneath it, which means that it, it will wear smaller and, and thus I think looks more like a wall clock, which is a very interesting look. To match the very soft curved form of the watch, there's a uh, domed mineral crystal on the front, which whilst I would have preferred a, a sapphire crystal in its place, I can understand why they went with mineral to be able to put the extra expense into putting a domed version on it, which meets the case extremely tightly, and means you have a very pleasantly curved watch in the hand. Then of course one has the, um, the, the addition of, uh, of, of the dial, and the dial is a flat white dial, but which is very glossy and shiny, and I'll come back, back to this because that's a very important detail about this watch. Because one also has these, these dark and raised black indices, which means that you get depth to the dial, and they're not simply painted on, they are actually applied. And these match the hands perfectly, in addition to the, the Swiss railway markings underneath Mondaine with uh, SBB, CFF, and FFS, which is the, uh, the, the marking on the side of Swiss trains in the three different languages, with of course that logo next to it, which matches the second hand with that lollipop end. Incidentally, this, uh, this detail on the dial also matches the crown very nicely, which has an, enamel, um, an enameled Mondaine logo in red on it, again to stick with those Swiss colours of red and white, with the addition of black to create greater contrast. And of course within this watch there's a, a quartz movement, which is a Swiss quartz movement, the Ronda 513. And this is a very reliable Swiss quartz movement, and does have a, a, a great degree of metal parts, um, and so doesn't follow the, uh, the general belief that quartz movements are, are made of plastic and are disposable. This is a serviceable movement, and, and one which will last, which is exactly what you want in these watches, um, and I think provides exactly the, the feel and the look that one would want in a watch designed to, to look like a clock, and to give that very attractive um, and, and unique style. And in terms of straps, one, ha one has two options. One can either go with a leather strap which comes in black or red, or indeed in, uh, in a, a version with a, a Milanese mesh style of bracelet, which is slightly more expensive, but gives you the option of something a bit more, more refined 
and which goes even better with that railway inspiration. But uh, the most interesting piece of this watch, though, is the effect of that dial on the hands. Now, invisible to inspection during the day, the backlight versions of this watch, which I find particularly interesting, have a luminescent paint on the back of the hands. And what this means is that during the day when the sun's shining onto the dial, light is reflected off the very glossy dial onto the back of the hands. And this means that during the night they glow with a, a very bright and very clear outline around the hands, which means that you can enjoy the blacked out shape of the hands, but also be able to enjoy legibility at night. And of course, because the, uh, this is reflected, um, they, they certainly do last in terms of giving you a long lasting legibility at night without compromising the design. And in terms of the price of these very interesting dress watches, they run from about £175 for the 35mm version on a leather strap up to a bit over £200. Actually, they run up to about £210, which I admit is a bit, is a bit over the price, but um, um, is, uh, is, I think, justified for the version in the larger size on the metal bracelet. And so I feel these watches make a really wonderful piece for any addition to a collection, or simply as an everyday watch, which give extremely good legibility, a very reliable Swiss quartz movement, and a design which is, uh, which is immediately recognisable. And so I'll conclude the video here, but do tell me in the comments down below what you thought of the video, and indeed what you thought of the various watches I spoke about. And so if you did enjoy the video, then please do like, share and subscribe to help the channel, and to be able to enjoy more content here in future. So thank you very much for watching, this is Armin the Watch Guy, out.